Good morning. Registration for First Communion and Confirmation, years one and two, as well as other faith formation opportunities is now open. Please visit the St. Norbert website for program details. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, good morning. Today we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We gather as a parish family here in the church, and those watching on our live stream as well. And as you know, I have to say hi, Mom. So there she's there in Phoenix. Always <laughs> so say hi to my mom. Uh, but we gather today in the knowledge that the Lord has raised Mary to the heavens. And as we gather, let us place ourselves in God's loving presence, call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. 
God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns, and on its heads were diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she came, gave birth. She gave birth to a son a male child destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at that moment, the sound of your greeting reached my ears, and the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to all of you inside our church today this beautiful Sunday and welcome to those of you who are watching on our live stream today so today we celebrate the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven the assumption of her body and soul into heaven she's no longer here physically She's not buried someplace here. She's in heaven, body and soul, with our Lord and our Heavenly Father. Now, this concept of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a dogma of the Roman Catholic Church. And it became a dogma a little less than 70 years ago. Now, that doesn't mean that, well, about 70 years ago, we started believing in this concept. The church has always had that teaching. The the church has always believed in the assumption of Mary into heaven. But it was formalized 70 years ago, about 70 years ago, with this dogma. Now, of course, the assumption of Mary, you know, occurs at the end of her earthly life. But our gospel today is really about some of the important things that happened to her earlier in her life. But if I switch gears a little bit, one of my favorite movies is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Has anybody seen that movie? It's, it's about 30 years old. There's one person in the back that's seen the movie. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, in this movie, The lead character, his name is Indiana Jones, and he's an archaeologist and a part-time university professor, and I think he does a lot of other things too. But he's he's in search of the Ark of the Covenant because he wants to find the Ark of the Covenant before it falls into some wrong hands who have some evil intents for the Ark. So you may be thinking, what does that have to do with Mary and the Assumption? 
Well, if you look over into our little shrine on my right, your left, and you see the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary holding her baby Jesus, beautiful little statue. To the left of the statue, there's the stained glass windows. And if you look down, I think it's about the third pane, de pane down, you can see the Ark of the Covenant. There's an image of it there. And if you remember, the Ark of the Covenant was created. It's, it held, it's a man-made thing made out of wood, but, but gold-plated. And it contained the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. So it reflected the covenant between God and man. It also contained at some point a jar of manna. And manna is a precursor of the Holy Eucharist. It also contained the staff of Aaron. But it was considered a very holy thing. And the presence of God was believed to be inside this ark. Well, what's inside Mary's womb? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the Jesus. So Mary is like, you could say, is the new Ark of the Covenant. Mary represents the new covenant with God. And she carries Jesus in her womb. In the reading today from the gospel, if you went back a few verses before what we read today, it's the story about the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary and telling her that she will conceive a child. And Mary is like, well, I don't know how that can happen to me. But Gabriel explains to her that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will come upon her and she will conceive a child called Jesus. We all know this story. Mary at that time was most likely very young. Maybe as young as 12 years old, maybe 14 years old. I don't think we know exactly how old she is. Some of us may think, think well, that's really, really young. But of course, at that time, that wasn't all that unusual. But she responds a, a hearty yes, because she says, I am the handmaid of the Lord, which means she has to do what she will do, whatever God asks her to do. And she's full of joy because that's what the Eucharist brings with us. That's what the, that's what the host is all about. That's what Jesus is all about. So what do you do when you're filled with joy? And you've just got some really good news. You rush out and you want to tell somebody. So she immediately rushes, and that's how our gospel today starts out. She rushes to see her relative Elizabeth, who is also pregnant, about six months along, according to the angel Gabriel. Now keep in mind, this is a young girl, 12, 14 years old. And where Elizabeth lives is in the hill country about 60 miles away. Now, as far as I know, there's not a whole lot of flights from Nazareth to, you know, to where Elizabeth lives. So she most likely walked or maybe rode a donkey. The Gospels don't, doesn't describe that. And think about what St. Joseph was probably thinking. You're going where? But she goes, and she's carrying a secret inside her. That secret is the baby Jesus. She hasn't told Elizabeth that she's pregnant. She hasn't told Elizabeth that she's carrying Jesus. But this is perhaps the very first Eucharistic moment in the gospel, because she's bringing God to Elizabeth. And in our reading, it says the Holy Spirit came upon Elizabeth, too. That's how she was able to conceive. He was still Zachariah's son. But through the miracle of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth recognized Mary and recognized 
who was inside her. That's true faith. And she also recognized that Mary believed what, the, what Gabriel had told her was going to happen. And when Mary approached Elizabeth, the baby inside Elizabeth, who would become St. John the Baptist, leaped for joy. Because Christ was there. And Jesus tells us much later that I am the good shepherd. My sheep know me, and I know them. And St. John recognized the presence of Jesus. So did Elizabeth. And they were filled with joy. Joy again happens when you're with Christ. It's the only source of true joy. And when you think about <clears throat> John the Baptist dancing, jumping for joy inside the womb of his mother, St. Elizabeth, think back in the Old Testament to David. When David, when the, the Ark of the Covenant approached David, or David approached the Ark of the Covenant, he did a dance of joy as well. Again, recognizing the presence of, of God. We have that same opportunity with each other. We, should, we can recognize Christ inside each of us. And it should give us joy. And we also have an really good opportunity here at Mass in a few minutes, a little bit later, to receive our Lord, the Blessed Sacrament, into our, into our bodies so we too can become temples, temples of our Lord. So remember that when we talk with one another, that we are all temples of the Lord, and that should bring us joy. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all the things that are invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mary trusted in God with her whole heart and soul. Let us now trust that God will listen as we give voice to the needs of our hearts. For the church, that the faithful will look to Mary, the mother of Christ, as a role model for saying yes to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may they be given the grace to lead with integrity and work toward a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For expectant mothers, that the Spirit of God will bless them with good health and fill them with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for teachers, students, and parents. May they be resilient in meeting the challenges of the new school year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For firefighters working tirelessly to protect life and property, may they find renewed strength and know that they are appreciated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who were injured or killed in the Haiti earthquake and for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the volunteer ministry leaders of St. Norbert, may they find connection and vision in the soon-to-be-formed ministry leadership team. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those among us who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and for those listed in the parish bulletin, and especially for Janet Llewellyn, Gilbert R. Cruz, Vincente Zamora, Patrick Braga, Mary Estrada, Sister Teresa, and Leo Montano. May God comfort them and restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, and especially for Jim Cuchaba, Guillermo Figueroa, Donald J. Lewis, Alberto Maramba, Jr., Margaret Rose Cisan, Deborah Balfour, Maurice Bates, and Peter, Bishop Peter Esterka. May they rejoice forever with the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of, of Philip Councilman, for whom this Mass is being offered in a special way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O God, you know the longing of our hearts. Let your will be done. Give us the grace to trust you as we await your answer to our prayers. And we ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing the praises of Mary. Die. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the inter intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people, right? Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth the incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the, working, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial 
of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Norbert, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Tan, his brother bishops, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys, and of heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.